Hi everybody, Cerebra Sana in Paris. So if you saw my parody video, you've been following this and you think like me, you probably got a good laugh out of it. If you want to share that video with people, and they're not really going to understand the way we would understand. I figured what I do today is come back and sort of go through it. So the first part was just to show you these slogans, the stay home, flatten the curve. Who ever said flatten the curve? And even as an imperative. It's not even something that people would say until just, just recently, right? Then you've got wash your hands as if we're children. So now everybody's running around scrubbing this and spraying that and overcooking their food and repeatedly washing their hands. I'm not a germaphobe, but whenever I come home, I just wash my hands. Just, just like, just something that you do. I want you to know I don't automatically wash my hands every time I go to the bathroom, okay? Can you deal with that? So coming out and telling people you have to wash your hands and and freaking people out to the point that they're calling the radio station. Oh, I uh, I touched my doorknob to go get my mail downstairs in the hall, and and I put my hand sanitizer on after I opened my mailbox, and then I walked up the stairs and I touched the banister walking up the stairs back to my apartment, and and then I, I put more hand sanitizer on because you know I touched the banister, and now I'm home, and all I left my shoes outside because you know the virus can get on the shoes, and I don't want to bring the shoes with the virus on them into my house. Are they taking this so seriously that they've forgotten that they've lived all their life up to this point without having to worry about these things? That just basic hygiene says, you know, should dictate your behavior, not government officials coming out and repeating incessantly, go wash your hands. So um, there was the wash your hands, social distancing. That was my favorite. This was the one that made me sit up and stare at the television when I heard this coming out of the Prime Minister's mouth here in France. And he said it obviously in French, and what made me just sit up and stare at him was... Those words don't even go together. They literally translated it word for word. So I just searched what I thought would be the original translation. So I just put social distancing into the search engine, and, and the first thing that came up was the CDC website. That immediately confirmed my suspicion that somebody got something that was sent to some translator and it came back and they just rolled with it and it just sounded so bizarre the big one was this one we're at war with an invisible enemy i just searched that phrase because again i wanted to see in the different cultures the different countries if they're using the same language and they are and if you just look at this it was usa today writers referencing spain spain says we're at war macron in france says we're at war and those are the only two. If I had clicked, there would have been more. But I'm just trying to point out with this video that there's ways that you can put up a filter when you're watching the news and, and start to really think about, what am I seeing? Is this special just for me? Or is this message being broadcast literally around the world? And when it is, and when the same way is being used to say the things, that sort of points to a centralized origin of the content, which I'm going to get to later in this video. I want people to understand is how reports get put together. So let's just keep going through the video very quickly. So we're at war with an invisible enemy is what everybody is now saying around the world. This background image, I don't know if you can see up in the top right corner, it says World Economic Forum, because this was one of the animations that they chose to use for the event 201. They ran a simulation for a pandemic. October 18 of 2019 to see what would happen if if there was a big breakout of some some strange unknown disease Let's just keep going this is a famous asterix comic book and this is from 2017 and this guy he's the masked chariot driver who's coming to participate in this trans Italy chariot race that's his name and this came out in 2017 which is, again, I'll come back to that in a minute. But, all right, so let's keep going. So the song is saying, I went to Paris in France. I went to Paris in France. So I had to show the Eiffel Tower, obviously taking precautions. This is actually a friend's dog and did a little Photoshop. But here's another Eiffel Tower picture wearing the mask. So this was all the Paris and France stuff. This is just some footage driving by a hospital. The thing is now, people, they all the hospitals have tents set up. I looked at all the hospitals I could find, and they all have tents. Just like what you're seeing in, in the United States or in Italy or Spain, wherever, they've all got these big tents set up, which I think is bizarre, but the same bizarre thing is happening 
all around the world. Then I just superimposed this guy's video. I hope you are aware of this movement called Film Your Hospital. It's hashtag Film Your Hospital. There's, it's just people sitting home watching the news and hearing their local news say, oh, the local hospital is overrun with patients. And they're like, really? And so they get up off their couch and they go out with their phones and they film. And they're trying to get the information. So this guy got hassled by the people at the emergency room. And he just says, you know, we're trying to get to the truth. And that why is all this panic, all this hype? And if you actually go out, go over there, it's not much is happening. So I encourage you to go check out that Film Your Hospital hashtag. And even on YouTube, lots of people are posting their videos. And if I may, people, if I could just make a little suggestion, I still don't understand why. Everybody films vertically. When you go to the movies, the screen's not vertical. Visually, it's frustrating to have a tall, skinny rectangle. Just put it horizontally and film horizontally. It's much more pleasing and it's far more easy to use if you want to use footage like that to edit something later. Turn the camera horizontally, please, 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 please. Moving on, now we get to the supermarket. The footage starts on the grapefruits. Here in France, you have to tell where the produce is actually from. Nobody was buying the, uh, the grapefruits. There's this woman going by with all of the toilet paper and like house cleaning things and the mask. And I thought, well, that is just hysterical. This was just a shot that I've had for eons that I just figured I would throw into the video because again, I'm just sort of trying to show the irony of society. I mean, you're free to wear whatever clothes you want. I'm not, I don't care about that. I was just struck by the, the contradiction, the medieval wear and the eyes glued to the phone, like high tech and medieval merch. This is another thing that I don't know, followed my channel back when I had my, my big channel that got killed. I had covered the Bataclan and the Paris attacks and all the Charlie Hebdo stuff. So this is actually a shot of the Bataclan people all gathering at that occasion. So I just put a mask on the Bataclan and I just stuck masks on all the, all the people there. It was actually Italian reporters were, were filming a, a live shot. She was talking about the mood in Paris while I was standing right there. And because I speak Italian, I could understand what they were saying and they were just spewing like utter lies, 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 lies. And I went up, after they finished, I went up to the cameraman behind the camera and I just said to her in Italian, I said, you, you do realize that what she just said is not at all representative of what we're doing here. And he just kind of shrugged at me and it was basically, he said, you know, what are you going to do? That's just how it is. Fine. So the media lies, we know that. So that's why I don't hesitate to use this kind of propaganda footage to, to poke some fun at another media stunt that we're experiencing. If you do take, if you stop the video or even grab the the actual comic book. It says right here, the one they call the masked Origa, the great coronavirus, and his faithful bacillus. Origa in Latin means chariot driver, but masked. He's wearing a mask. And this is in 2017 that they're doing this. And 2017 is interesting again. Why? Because 2017 is when they issued the pandemic bond for three years. So it was coming due in July. 2020. The purpose of this video is not to talk about the pandemic bond, but just so you know, the conditions for payout in this thing required that a pandemic be declared and, and that it last for at least 12 weeks. 12 weeks. So they finally came out and declared the pandemic on March 11th, right? So if you start thinking March 11th, April 11th, May 11th, June 11th, it's like they were just coming in under the wire to be able to get this thing launched in time for the conditions to be met. And then when you go through this whole PDF, it's 386 pages long, but when you read through it, it literally reads in some places like the rules to play Monopoly. Like how many people need to be dead or declared ill or, or something per, they call them worldwide territories, which I found rather odd. Geographic spread, right? They have a glossary in the Local, regional, and global outbreak. You know, is greater than or equal to 20 with respect to only one worldwide territory. More than one and less than eight worldwide territories. It's, it just sounds bizarre to me. But anyway, so this is a long thing. I don't encourage you to go read it. But it, it was interesting that they started saying in certain places how many people had to be per day dying for it to be considered a, a true crisis and whatever. So it was just extremely detailed and it was for the coronavirus, right? It had other diseases that it could be involved, but coronavirus has its own category, actually.
All right, if we go into the glossary a little bit more, they define case. What's a case? What's a death? I think most people would say, well, I think I pretty clear. A case, somebody who has it. A death, well, somebody who died from it. Not exactly. Because here, case means any case, including a suspected, probable, or confirmed case. Okay? As identified in such a, a, a WHO report. Okay, who says so? The WHO says so. So, even for death, death means any death, including suspected, probable, or confirmed, as identified by who? By who? So, they're writing this document. It comes out in June of 2017, but they weren't writing it in May of 2017. This is stuff that gets prepared. The thing is 386 pages long. They prepared this well, well, well in advance. So, the, what's coming out now is you see these doctors are coming out and they're saying things like, We need to understand how the CDC and National Vital Statistics System are instructing physicians to fill out death certificates related to COVID-19. COVID-19 death can be made even without testing. Based on assumption alone, the death can be reported to the public as an, another COVID-19 casualty. It doesn't make any sense until you go back and you look at that they're going to consider a case a suspected, or probable, or confirmed, and that a death would be suspected, probable, or confirmed, and those are all going to be in the stats that they need. So they're just lumping everyone together. So to go back to what I was showing you in my video, the coronavirus, the mask, I was trying to show you that at the same time that somebody is devising that pandemic bond in 2017, somebody is coincidentally coming up with, oh, a funny storyline for a comic book. Okay, think about it. What are the odds? Here again, in 2017, this is all happening at the same time. Trump asks vac vaccination skeptic Robert F. Kennedy Jr. to lead Vaccination Safety Commission, which was one of his campaign points, right? That if he got elected, he would look into vaccine safety, right? You've got how many billions of dollars that have been paid out to vaccine-damaged people, families, deaths. You've got your vaccine court that was set up in the late 80s, giving immunity to the pharmaceutical companies, right, so they can continue to produce their dangerous vaccine and they can go unscathed. So Trump, you know, love him, hate him, whatever, you got to give him credit for at least wanting to set up a commission that would actually serve a purpose, meaning let's look at vaccine safety. And Kennedy, you know, was to head that up. And, and lo and behold, you get geek of the century, who comes right out in an interview and says... And somebody, his name is Robert Kennedy Jr., was advising him that vaccines were causing bad things. And I said, no, that's a dead end. That would be a bad thing. Don't do that. How does he get to dictate what a president of the United States can or cannot do or should or shouldn't do? Isn't that strange that this idiot would have so much power? over the president of what they say is the most powerful nation in the world. The lines, the lines, everybody stands now. It's supposed to be one meter, right? But when I walked by here, they were, there was easily like two meters between everybody, and they all stand there patiently waiting. And then you see everybody buying bottles of water. And this is a shot I took in another supermarket, pretty much right as they were about to. Everyone was thinking they were going to put us on lockdown because what they're doing here at the moment in France, which I totally loathe. I don't know if they're doing this in other countries specifically, but here what they're doing is the news will come out and say something horrible might be happening. We will know more tomorrow. So people kind of sensed that something was happening and so they all went out and they bought their water, they bought their toilet paper or whatever. What the media is doing, and they just did it again this week, is they when they put us on lockdown it was to last until the 15th of April. And on Wednesday of this week, the news came out and said that it was definitely going to be extended. We don't know for how long, and we'll probably know more tomorrow night, meaning Thursday night. And then Wednesday morning, the news, kind of like Groundhog Day, the news comes in, and it's like the same thing, except they've just changed it. And they said, yes, um, uh, lockdown is definitely going to be extended. We don't really know very much. I guess we'll know more on Monday night. What? Isn't it supposed to be tonight? The news is like doing teasers, teasers for the bad news. And when you do a teaser for the bad news, and this time we've got five full days to sit here in anguish, wondering what they're working up for us, 
right? And plus it's Easter weekend. Nobody is supposed to go anywhere. You can't have your family come over. It's a nightmare. Let's just keep these people in panic mode. We're not going to be freed on April 15th. They said it's been extended indefinitely. Indefinitely. We won't even know more until the president speaks on Monday night at 8 p.m. So when you see things like this, when you see people panic buying or whatever, in a way, it's a natural reaction, right? Because when you don't know what's going, ha going to happen to you, you want to protect yourself as much as you can. So, so that was just that. So the toilet paper obviously was stocked. This is Sunday night, March 15th. And March 15th was the first round of elections, municipal elections in France. So this is before they've announced the lockdown. This is the day after our prime minister announced at 8 p.m. on national television that as of midnight, meaning in four hours, cafes, bars, restaurants, movie theaters, and all non-essential commerce would be shut down until further notice. Everything was being shut down for our safety. It's the coronavirus. And you've got the, the news crews out there filming people sitting out on a terrace having dinner. Like, this is your last meal. This is your last meal in public on a terrace. Enjoy it. And in five minutes, it's going to be over kind of thing. And then the next day, we get up, and, and it's election day because they told us we could go out and vote. I, there's no problem there. Go out and vote. And coincidentally, it was a glorious, beautiful spring day. Beautiful sunshine, blue skies, and everybody went to vote. And then they went to the parks and the gardens and they hung out. Because it wasn't illegal to go to the parks and the gardens on a beautiful sunny Sunday. And what do you think happens? Monday night, the prime minister came out and sort of wagged his finger at us and said, we saw you. You're not taking this seriously. We're going to lock down all the parks and gardens. So it's almost like they got us, right? They stopped the chemtrails long enough. They sent in the sunshine, knowing that human nature, being what it is, would want to go outside. You've just closed all the cafes, the restaurants. So where the heck are you going to go? You go to the park. And I spent the whole afternoon in the park with a friend. Actually, there were chemtrails that particular day, but they were like the last ones. I haven't seen chemtrails since March 15th, to be perfectly honest. So subliminally, does this make you think of anything? Who is the set designer? And then they go and they mock the people buying all the toilet paper. I mean, it's subliminal. It's a bit of a stretch. But I mean, of all the images that you could pick up, rolls of toilet paper on the set anyway moving through the video this was something that i tweeted uh let me just take a moment to to plug my twitter i'm not a fan of twitter i know it's controlled and i know that it has its issues but quite honestly it's quick and easy to get stuff out there so if you are so inclined to follow me on twitter you'll see content from me more regularly because i can just make a quick image and just put a hashtag on it baby bilderberg was touring a hospital with the with the patients and I mean this is so wrong on so many levels like are not you supposed to be in a safe place and taking care of the nation from a place where you have no risk of getting sick and dying from this heinous disease that has come out of nowhere so they've got this tent here's one of the tents right it looks like a set from mash and he's standing there and I swear it was the worst performance I've ever seen this guy give you can see it on YouTube, even if you don't speak French, just watch it. And even without the sound, it's like they must have slipped him his text at the very last minute. He, I think he may have had at least one teleprompter that wasn't working because you can see him foraging. His eyes are kind of, he doesn't know where to look. And it was just a nightmare. And there was a woman here who was signing and I just grabbed footage of Coco the gorilla signing and I just, I think. Coco was saying things that made more sense than, than this guy. Yeah, I thought this was funny. The gesture is the same. Can you see? He's like with the hand. So yeah, so we're at war with an invisible enemy. He says that here. Again, moving through my video. So here we go. This is the footage from the event 201. This is from where they do a little recap of what their event was. And they come right out and they say, organizers invented, invented a disease. Just let's make one up, okay? Guess which one? And this is from their own video, Event 201. 
A coronavirus. <laughs> what did you just say? A coronavirus. Oh, amazing coincidence. Six weeks before. So this is the other thing. The, the event 201 took place October of 2019. And then we get this thing. September 2019. Johns Hopkins. They're all over this thing. Preparedness for a high-impact respiratory pathogen pandemic. What do you know? Sorry if this is turning out to be a long video, you guys, but there's just so much stuff that is just so bizarre. It's like interwoven bizarre things. Okay, so here, here's that Johns Hopkins report. It's 84 pages long, and if, if you jump down to page 56, this just jumps right out of at me. Okay, they're talking about NPIs, non-pharmaceutical interventions that can be used to treat this pandemic, right? This high-impact pathogen. And what are they talking about? Travel restrictions, movement restrictions, quarantine, and social distancing. Right, so this is just everything that they're inflicting on us right now. They make the distinction between travel restrictions, refer to enforceable limitations on travel, but should not be confused with travel alerts or notices, which provide information for travelers on ongoing health events. Movement restrictions are measures implemented to prevent or limit contact between infectious individuals and susceptible populations, ranging from limits on how or where an individual can travel to full quarantine. Quarantine is a separation of potentially infectious individuals from susceptible populations, which is true. This is what we always thought quarantine was. You lock up the people who have the bug, right, who are sick, so they don't infect the people who are not sick. You don't lock up healthy people. Okay, You only lock up healthy people if you want to see how far you can test people's uh, ability to obey ridiculous orders. Okay, use of quarantine is rare and has been, what is this word? Controversial. Social distancing covers an array of measures aimed at reducing contact between members of the community that could potentially result in disease transmission, including closing schools, canceling mass gatherings, facilitating remote or teleworking, and suspending mass transit operations. Okay, people, so September of 2019, they're literally writing out the, the playbook. Okay, and the Johns Hopkins are the people who've been doing that big map, stupid real-time death and cases map. They're, they're, they're using their modeling data to run that thing. Okay, so let's just keep moving through, and then we got to... This is, again, somebody going out and filming their hospital, and he's getting accosted by these people who don't want him there, and he's just asking questions, where can I get tested? Oh, we can't tell you that. I want to get tested. Well, we can't tell you where the testing center is. And then this woman asks if he has a fever, and he says he has a pissed-off fever. Back to more footage from their own recap video, Mocked Up News Reports, which isn't even correct English, right? Mocked Up doesn't mean a mock news report is what the person should have used. If you're going to use English, use it correctly. Mock news reports means a fake news report. You can't just use words and, and, and just expect that the sentence will make sense. You have to use the right word in the sentence at the right place. Otherwise, you're just talking gibberish. And a mocked up news report does is gibberish to me. It's a mock news report. And mock means fake. Okay? Fake. So I put the title up. It's real, official, fake news that they produced themselves. And this is, again, this is part of the Event 201. You see it right there. And the, the, the dramatic voiceover, farmers started getting sick. What's that? Probably a bottle of sanitizer, hand sanitizer right there. And then we get the famous mannequin. Have you seen this? The mannequin? This little mannequin is actually the tip of a very big, ugly iceberg, which we're going to get to in a little while. Okay, the mannequins. But it goes by so quick that you don't have time to realize it's a mannequin. Okay, and somebody might say, oh, well, maybe they're talking about how they train the people or they won't let reporters into a, you know, a, a, an ICU unit or whatever. Yeah, no, no, no. The report is clearly making you think that this is a nurse working on a patient who's been intubated. If you look up on the wall, I just wrote on top of it because it would be able to see what it actually says. It says, no food and or drinks allowed near mannequins and or task trainers. 
anyway, so here we go. Back to the Event 201 video. Actors played the roles of healthcare experts and economists. So once again, official crisis actors playing the role of healthcare experts, which I thought was interesting when we come up to this. Now, this is interesting for two reasons. Well, actually, for three reasons. On the left-hand side, you have CNN exclusive footage. Exclusive means nobody else has this, except Channel 4 News in the UK. So right there, there's a, there's a problem. And again, they're taking us for fools, saying if CNN says it's exclusive, who, who among the viewing audience would dare to think that somebody else across the Atlantic might be running the same footage. Our viewers are too stupid to make that connection. Well, I'm not that stupid. So this is the, the footage on the right is from a, a UK broadcast. And what I noted was the name. At the outset, the footage is obviously bare. They just shot this woman speaking in front of a fuzzy microphone. And then CNN covers up you know, they, they, they cropped the image a little bit. You can see here they've cropped it a little bit. But it's, it's exactly the same shot. And it's exactly the same person. So what struck me about this report was the footage that we're seeing on CNN is exactly the same footage as we're seeing on the, the Channel 4 report in the UK, except that the Channel 4 report ran the mannequin shot. So somewhere I have to think that somebody at CNN said, no, man, that's just too, that's too much for even us to run the mannequin shot. They took out the mannequin shot on CNN. So then the third point that I wanted to bring up here is this woman. Who is this woman? Well, this is that woman. This is her. And what I wanted to show you is it blew my mind because look how they've done her up, right? She's... She looks kind of frumpy in her little blue gown, and she's got the mask on. Her eyebrows, they haven't painted them on as much as they've done here. And, you know, but this is her. And I found her. I simply typed in her name. You can see it right here. And what came up? This is what came up. And, and the first thing that my eyes saw was press and features and podcast and media contact. So this is not some distraught. ER worker who just happened to have a journalist come up and speak to her. This is like a, a media darling, okay? So, you know, when you when you click on the press and features section, you know, she's available to do reports. And then I saw media contact. Now, why would a doctor, I mean, media contact, I suppose doctors can be available for journalists if they want to ask serious journalistic questions. But when you click on media contact on her website, right, this is her website. Look what I saw. Let's work together. Info at strategicheights.com. Hmm. Strategicheightsinfo.com. Who might they be? Strategic Heights Media is a full service public relations and experiential marketing agency that specializes in building brand strategies and experiences that drive engagement with consumers and brands. With more than 25 plus combined years in the media industry, Strategic Heights Media has been immersed in a variety of entertainment and lifestyle projects from music, fashion, sports, and beauty to brands and corporation to nightlife and special events. Okay? Okay, people? So sh this is the agency, the PR agency, that you would contact to get this woman to participate in a feature or a special event. So getting back to my video, yeah, I just wanted to show you that if you have an opportunity to sort of research who these people are appearing on screen, well worth the, the effort because you, you find some gems like this. And, and this coming on the heels where they say they hired actors to play the healthcare experts and economists for their mock simulation. But what's to say that they didn't engage people to play along when this thing went quote unquote live, if that's what has happened, because there were so many similarities here. This thing didn't just somebody eats bat soup, gets sick, and now the world economy is on its knees. Come on, people. I'm sorry, you're busted. 
you are allowing yourself to be passed off as distraught ER worker, afraid for her family and afraid for everybody and oh, da, da. yeah, and you have a media contact that's a PR agency that pushes branding and, and all this kind of BS. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Then you've got the drone footage. You hear about the drone footage in UK where they're out identifying people walking out in the middle of nowhere with their dog. Right, and it says non-essential. And I thought this was just the funniest shot. It's like something you would see the onion would do this, right? The hand just you don't even see the journalist. So he's t you know holding his microphone up to this woman at 611, which by the way is 911 upside down if you turn if you just flip it around, it's 911 right there. This woman is up at 6 o'clock in the morning to talk to a journalist. Like, what is this all about? So I just made the joke, Maria's a real essential early bird. Like, come on. How, how do you even set up? Do you go knock on the window at 6? Excuse me? Yeah, are you awake? Could we do a little report with you, Maria? Come on. It just says, Maria, a resident in Compiègne, okay, which is a city about a, an hour and a half away from Paris. But, I mean, it just is so bizarre. It's just as bizarre. You have to look at this stuff. I hate watching the news. I can only stomach it for a certain amount of time. But you just have to look at it just with eyes that are actually seeing what you're seeing. And I'm seeing a hand holding a microphone up to a woman named Maria at 6.11 in the morning. It just is bizarre. This is just me driving through a parking lot that's empty, 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 empty. And the orange things reminded me of this guy's film your hospital footage. He says, a lot more cones than patients. Because this is another one of those testing tents, and there's nobody there. And then more information. So this is the chorus of the, so the song. How silly can you get? Yeah, yeah. How silly can you get? So I just replay the sequence with they invented the virus. And now this, have you seen this? This is another Film Your Hospital video. It was one of the first ones that I saw. But this is a woman in her apartment building in the UK who comes home to find that they're distributing underneath the doors a flyer saying that the homeless man outside her building she'd been feeding has died of COVID. And she's like, I just fed him this morning and he was just taken away by the police. He's not dead. Why are you, when did you even get this information that he was dead when he's clearly still alive? So that, you know, if you look around, there's more reports of people being declared dead when they're still alive. And I actually saw one headline. The problem here, people, is you have there's so much happening. If you don't grab it immediately, it disappears or it, it, it gets flooded, bombarded by other content, especially on Twitter. It's impossible to, to refind anything on Twitter. And this was something that I'd seen where the headline of the article was a man surprised at announcement of his own death. In, in the news and and the guy's like hello um I'm alive <laughs> you know I'm I'm fine actually thank you for being interested in my health and and I can't find it and I didn't screenshot it or anything so I apologize for that but yeah there's a lot of weirdness going on and even the cases when they're not dying of you know people die every day the obituaries there's always somebody dying somewhere every day that's part of the life cycle okay but the there are doctors coming out as I said earlier who are saying that they don't appreciate being told to list every death as COVID death. And that's just dishonest. Then there's this, which is the famous clip of the guy who went at least two days in a row to the parking lot of this urgent health care testing center in Hawaii. And he sat there and he watched, and he'd seen this woman on the news. We were overwhelmed yesterday by people wanting to get tested. And so he went and he sat in the parking lot for four hours and he saw no one. He confronted the woman and her reaction was to slap the guy, which you see here. He just, she just goes and whacks the guy. And there was a cop. If you watch the full clip, there's a cop standing right to the left of them. And then this is a guy in New York City. Her attitude was like, are you one of us kind of thing. And he said, oh, I'm a citizen journalist. And then she changed her tune and, and she couldn't really talk. But he says, have you been seeing a lot of COVID patients? And she says, no, not for the moment. So again, a downtown New York hospital, and the action is just not corresponding to what the news is, is wanting everybody to believe. This guy was hysterical. 
He just holds his ground. I just took the very end of his clip, but it's very worth watching the entire clip. Before he even starts his report, he says, and you can see behind me, they're coming to get me. They're coming up to me, and I've done nothing wrong. I'm not even on the hospital property, because you can see in the back the tents, the testing tents. And he'd been around trying to ask if he could get tested, and they refused him, and there's nobody there. And so he's standing on a parking lot that's not part of that parking lot. And he's just doing his report, and the guy has now made his way all the way up to him. And he just turns, and he's like, can I help you? This whole thing is a farce, okay? Can I help you? Can I help you? Just wait, even like the head movement. It's kind of like, uh, can I help you? <laughs> what is your problem? So I just wanted to include him. <clears throat> and I really have to applaud these people who are standing up to authority and just going out there and showing the, the BS. This is a screenshot. Again, it goes by really quick. But... I wanted to point out that this was the night of that um, speech when our president was standing on that set from the MASH TV show and doing his report and saying we were at war with an invisible enemy. And this was the number. These were the numbers that they were showing that night. I thought, isn't that interesting? I, you've got the 33 and, and the 33, two times 33. And the, anyway, it just was... Uh, interesting moving right along this was again something that i just doctored which i thought was just so funny it just makes me laugh right be afraid be very very afraid right I threw that in there and here we go before lockdown dreary chemtrail skies every day every day every day i have hundreds i think even thousands of photos of the sky that look like this all the time and since march 15th this is what we've had it's blue blue sky and this was actually, look, this is the uh, the weather report for the entire week. Sunny, 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 sunny. You never see that. And I even heard on the radio, they said that we've had the longest stretch of beautiful weather now for the first time in 40 years. Coincidence? It's like they're just saying, send in all the sunshine. We've got everybody locked up. Let's just push them to their limits. Because especially here you know, in Europe, it's kind of like a cultural, cultural thing. When it's nice, you go to the park, you sit outside, you have a picnic. So to put people on house arrest and then send in the sunshine is really like, <laughs> let's see how much they're going to take of this. And then this ties in with the fact of the jogging, right? Because it was like you had five official reasons you could go outside. You could go outside to get your groceries. You could go outside if you had business to do, like if you could not work remotely, you would be allowed to go out to, to, to do your job. You would be allowed to help an elderly person um, in need. And you could go out for health activity, physical activity, right? And now, as of like two days ago, you can't jog between 10 and 7 p.m., okay? No jogging allowed between 10 and 7 p.m. So this is how I just... And, and I had used the term in a, in, a, in a comment on somebody's video. I forget whose video it was. But I, I used the term in a comment. I said, they, you know, they just expect us to behave like obedient gerbils. And I just liked the way that sounded, the obedient gerbils. So I found these little guys, and I just thought it was funny because they run and then they stop. They run and then they stop. So I just figured I'd go. So can we jog? No. And they're kind of waiting. And then yes. And they start running. No. They stop. Yes. And this was the funny, infamous shot of when he got elected. He stood in front of the pyramid, breaking with tradition, because no French president had ever gone and done this. So I just had to put a mask on that, and I thought it was funny, his little puppet hands sticking up. Um, another image, because it says, went to Paris and France, found a little romance, and this is what we see these days when people are out, were out protesting, because, again, this protest has served so many purposes. It shut down all the protests in France, right? At the time that this thing was, was kicking into gear, pretty much daily, we had protests from lawyers, healthcare workers, doctors, teachers, students, retired people. The retired people was the big thing at the moment, the retirement reform that they were trying to push through, not to mention the yellow vests who've been going strong since, you know, for over a year now, towards the beginning. They called a special meeting at the General Assembly at 5 o'clock in the afternoon on a Saturday to talk about the, the health crisis. And they used that occasion to slip in the executive order to push through the retirement reform that they were still negotiating. And, and the reaction was, are you kidding? You know, so democracy is so dead and the weasel factor is just so through the roof. It's amazing. So I just, 
you know, go to Paris and France, get some romance. I just thought that would be an interesting shot to show while we're strolling down the boulevard. This was another thing. This was, you know, I put a mask on this idiot. Did you see the idiot hovering over Paris a while ago? Just who thinks these things up? And yes, he's holding a rifle. I mean, come on. Strolling down the boulevard, so I thought I would show the uh, the yellow vests coming face to face with the with the thuggery. And this is just a horrible, horrible, horrible thing that I just included because the line in the song says, I know I should have been good. And what is happening in, in this shot is this is a guy in one of the one of the neighborhoods that you could uh, low income kind of neighborhood, shall we say. And this kid gets stopped. He's by himself. This is during the beginning of lockdown. I think it might have been day one or two of the lockdown. So this thing has just kicked into gear. You have, If you go out, you have to have a certificate with you. You have to check the box, which of those categories that I just mentioned require you outside. And so he's by himself because you can't even be in groups of people. It's, it's forbidden to walk around in, they call them packs. Packs of people is how I would translate that into English. Packs, no packs of people. So here's this guy, you know, he's in a low-income neighborhood. He's a, a youth. And this category of person gets systematically beat upon by the police. So here he is. He's stopped. He's obviously non-threatening. And you see in the video that he actually pulls out his paper and he shows them whatever it is they've asked for. And as he's, you know, he pulls out the paper and then, and then just watch what happens. He's, did you see that? The cop kicks the guy, kicks him. Okay? But then he sprays him because they all walk around with their cans of raid and they spray the people, you know, and it's, it's, it's hideous. It's absolutely hideous. And the guy filming yells, you son of a, you know what, out the window to these people. But it's, it's, it, there he is. He's getting sprayed. Can you see it? He's getting sprayed. The kid was doing nothing. He was showing his papers. So we see this more and more often. It's just gratuitous police brutality, and, and it's just so disgusting. And then they wonder why the inner city kids, you know, are tough or whatever. Yeah, if you're getting sprayed like a bug, you'd, you'd react as well. I mean, it's just so unfair and unjust and sickening. Sickening. So, uh, so moving right on. Then we get to this. We believe the coronavirus is a hoax because Trump had made the famous comment that it's a hoax. The guy can't answer the question. He's dancing around. We're working to keep people safe, and and it's not a gotcha question. And, and I just thought it was very strange that he he's hot putting all around. Why? Obviously, his talking points haven't given him the right answer that he's supposed to say. So he can't think on his feet. He does. He can't be honest. He can't speak for himself. So it's just. It's just ridiculous. I'm just trying to show you, that's why I chose the song, How Silly Can You Get, is really just a statement of this whole situation. It's just ridiculous. And then I just intercut that with this other guy who's in New York, the same guy from before, who says that he got thrown out of the hospital because he was asking for information. And, and then from there, we just finish up with the guy, you know, the senator. He says, we're, we're taking it seriously, is the last thing he says. And then this is this is just me driving by another. They've, they've literally put police tape up around open spaces. You see, it's just open space, and they put the police tape up. This is like a way out of the way place. I go and I buy my fruits and vegetables at, at a local farm, and right near where this farm is, they have um, the Knights Templar. Just go see what's happening there, and they barricaded. And so I took a photo of that, and then I got back in my car, and then I saw this one. There was like two barricades, and somebody had knocked this one over. I did not knock it over. It was already knocked over. So I just took the photo, and I just thought that's a nice way to subtly end my video because it's like wake up and smell the psyop and push down the barrier. That's the only way, you know, we're going to get through this is at some point we have to stop taking the crap that they're throwing at us. And, and logic has to kick back in. We have to get over the fear. We have to get over the anxiety. We have to get over those negative emotions and switch the brain back to logical mode. Let's be logical. So that was just a walk through the video. And then I just figured I'd end with the coronavirus because it just is so ridiculous. 
I wanted to show you guys something about how they make media reports. Because when I showed you that identical side-by-side -side scene from CNN and then the Channel 4 News in the UK running the exact same footage, you have to wonder, like, how does, how does that happen? Well, it can happen by using something called B-roll footage. And B-roll footage is simply footage that is packaged, that's not like principal photography when you make a movie you shoot your main scenes you get everything you need you know for your main scenes and then you might go out and get extra extra footage to fill in different scenes or whatever and you call that b-roll so the CDC website has a section for b-roll footage and you can go down and you can see you can choose what you need you can put it in your report right it's in the newsroom section the media section Right, the CDC newsroom, come and get your propaganda. It's all, you don't have to make anything yourself. You don't have to go down to that airport and shoot those people, testing people at the airport. Just use our footage. So I just wanted to show you that because something jumped out at me. It says CDC Gov media video B-roll package, whatever, low resolution footage. What I want to show you here U.S. Customs and Border Protection, oh, people walking through a line, could be anywhere, it could be anything. Oh, people left for their summer vacation today, the lines were long at the airport. Oh, no, it's a health alert. Okay, Wuhan, more, more suitcases, more suitcases. Now look at this. This woman walks up to a counter. I want you to see this again. The first time you see this woman, look at this. What is going on here? What is going on here? The arm is up. The right hand is on her left shoulder. Now watch. She hands over her passport. There's no sound, actually. There's no sound here at all because the reporter puts on whatever voiceover they want on this. So he says, would you please look at the camera, take your picture, how lovely. Okay, thank you very much. Oh, now what's she doing? Oh, she's coughing into her elbow, right? Isn't this what you're supposed to do now? You cough into your elbow? Okay, so she coughs into her elbow. She takes a yellow piece of paper into her hands. Oh, now look. Oh, what, what was this? Why am I showing this to you people? I'm showing this because the CDC has shot the B-roll footage for the journalists. They've shot it several times. They're not real people, is what I'm trying to say. It's staged footage. It's staged footage. And here is the proof. Because when we see the woman from behind, the first shot I showed you, when her right hand is on her left shoulder, they told her to do that because when they reshoot the scene and you see her ap approaching face, face on, right? Oh, there she is, right? Remember, it's like, let take two. Okay, sneeze in your arm. Okay, come up to the counter. There's the yellow paper that she's going to get in a minute. Right, give the passport. Okay. He holds up the passport. He didn't hold the passport up in the first shot, though. He didn't hold it up in the first shot. He asked her to look at the camera in the first shot. Right? So here he holds up. And here he says, take the paper. So there she is holding the paper, which we just saw earlier. Right? So what I'm telling you people is this footage, the B-roll footage, is not even real footage. It's staged footage with their actors. Right? Take it again. Let's do it again. We'll shoot it from the side. We'll shoot it from the back. And she's going to put on her mask. Oh, now she's going to go stand next to the tall, scary-looking security guard. Right? It's all fake, fake staged footage. Right? But when you get this, this is another one. You know, they do multiple takes of this, and they are actors. And then you can put on top of it whatever report, you know, you need to be saying to people. But they're passing it off as real. They don't say this is fake footage from the CDC. They're passing it off as real. Okay, here she is again. Right? It's just footage that they've edited together in sections. What I'm trying to show you is what you see on the news, oftentimes it's been produced by somebody else. Packages get sent out here, here on the Johns Hopkins site. 
They're talking about Event 201, so you can get all the information, all the propaganda videos. I wanted to mention the concept of B-roll footage being used in the media because this is how you can end up with similar images being run on multiple stations because they send this stuff out. And something else that I found interesting on this Johns Hopkins website is media coverage. Right? Media coverage. What does that really mean, media coverage? And they're listing all the reports that have aired. Right? But when you look up who these people are, they're just promoting the fact that these media outlets ran their own produced reports with their own people. These are people who work for, for, for them, right? The media coverage. It's, these are people who are associated with them. So it's like placement. It's like story placement. And the media just comes and dut dutifully broadcast whatever it is they're told to broadcast. And lastly, I wanted to just show you this, talking about the B-roll footage. Well, there is also the stock images. These stock images had to have been produced at some point. So I thought, wouldn't it be interesting to see when these things were actually produced? Because who was talking about COVID-19? And actually, right here, this was like one of the names that the thing had. It wasn't immediately COVID-19. They named it COVID-19 um, in mid-February, I think. But this was one of the names, 2019 nc cove that it was going by, in addition to coronavirus, which, as you should all know by now, is a family. It's a family of viruses, coronavirus, it's a family of viruses. Okay, so then you have the images here. So I'm just giving you some things to think about while you're all locked up in your homes. You can do things like go on a stock footage site, and then like this one, I thought, hmm, when did they? When did this get produced? And you can see it, it, it was uploaded. On, on February 7th. To have produced this thing and had it ready for upload on February 7th, they had to be working on this, you know, beforehand. I don't know, days, I don't do motion design, but I mean, you could spend a, maybe a week doing something, getting it all right and tweaking it. What I'm saying is these things can give you hints as to when this thing was getting put into place. So looking at the stock images and seeing you know, the pictures of the masks, because I got a newsletter and the stock image that they had was like a, a, a basin in your bathroom and draped over the side of the basin were two calico masks. They weren't like surgical masks. They were like calico, like print masks, your latest fashion accessory. And, and I, found the, I found the image on one of these stock photo sites. And, you know, you just have to wonder, who, who would have thought to do like, a decorative calico surgical mask before like two months ago. I don't know. I don't know. You know, again, in the chapter B-roll footage, I wanted to show you something else that I, I found interesting. Media alert. This is bakersfield.com. Media alert. B-roll footage. Service master cleaning professionals discuss demo deep cleaning methods to break the chain of infection and stop and stop COVID-19. Okay, April 1st, 2020, Memphis, Tennessee, from Business Wire. So it's a report, right? They explain what the report is. And here's the report right here. I'm not going to show it all, but it's basically like a sanitation kind of company and how they sanitize and, and they have their special clothing and their gear and they're just promoting their services to clean and how effective their, their cleaning is. But what I noticed on this, it says B-roll, so that's always a key word, like why, why do I need this B-roll footage? And then it says down here, contacts Jim Thomas at Tag Team Global. Hmm, who is Tag Team Global? Well, it turns out that Tag Team Global is another one of these PR firms we enhance your marketing, advertising, and PR efforts with senior level communications professionals utilizing the best strategies, tactics, and technology. We're not here to promote our business. Our mission is to promote yours. Right? Tag Team Global. Right? It's, it's PR. So, I don't know. It's a chicken and egg kind of story. These people make cleaning products. Do they contact the PR? company and say, hey, dude, you know, let's put together a report and uh, let's get this out on social media to promote our services. I have no idea. But it's just like people capitalizing on things 
in a very structured way. You have to plan out these things. When are we going to shoot the footage? We have to edit the footage. We have to write the script. Da, 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 da. It's like you don't put these things together overnight. And by the way, I don't know if you can see this. When I went looking for the information, it had been taken down. This page has been taken down. And I found it on in the Wayback Machine. But the report still exists. But they didn't want people to know about this part. And I found it in the Wayback Machine. So this should be your friend. If you don't know about the Wayback Machine, I advise you to go and bookmark that somewhere. Lastly, we're on a UK, official UK Gov website, and high consequence infectious diseases, guidance, and then we get down here and it says, as of 19 March 2020, COVID-19 is no longer considered to be a high consequence infectious disease in the UK. And they are on lockdown. <laughs> And they're sending drones around. So my little parody video was showing you a really just split seconds of all of these different elements that I wanted to document today and show you my reasoning. So when you're watching the news, if you can stomach it, just as I used to say on my old channel, sometimes you just want to turn off the sound and just watch the watch the pictures and just try to imagine like if, if they weren't telling me what I was seeing, what what would my eyes tell me I'm seeing? And you come up with a totally different picture. Then the other thing is to just leave the sound on and, and not watch the pictures and just listen to the tone of their voices. And there's background music. What did they choose to illustrate the report? The dramatic, dramatic or upbeat or just pay attention to how the message is coming out. And you can learn a lot that way. And don't cave in to the idiocy. Do your research. What is a virus? Just basic stuff like that. Because some of the things we're hearing in the news is just really a little removed from reality. All right, guys, that was a long video. So thank you so much for listening. And, and this is, and always will be, Sariva Sana, signing off from Paris. Bye, everybody.